The Year of Miss Agnes by Kirkpatrick Hill. Chapter 12. There was a record Miss Agnes used to play for us from where she used to live in England. King's Choir, it was called. These people were singing in a big, big church made of stone, so their voices would echo like when we yelled down at the bluff. When she played that record, she looked far away again. We could see she was homesick for that place. My father was a teacher there before he died, she told us. In a church, we asked. No, at the college there, Cambridge. Did he teach kids like us? No, he taught mathematics to older students. Yes, college students. This church is there, right next to where he taught. I used to go there to listen to them sing when I was a child. She will be happy to be back in England. After Robin Hood, Miss Agnes read us Greek myths. Boy, those were something. To think of all the mischief those old time people could get up to, changing into trees and that. We loved the monster ones, and we drew pictures of the chimera and the hydra and the three headed dog. That was a good one. And after that, she read us the story about Ulysses, and that had more monsters. There was this one with just one big eye. I forget what you call him. After that, she read us all the fairy tales in the big red book. Those were kind of like the stories old Miss Toby and Grandma would tell us at night up at fish camp. Those old stories about Raven and people who turn into animals and all that. We told Miss Agnes about those stories, and after that, Miss Agnes would read us a fairy tale. And then we would tell her one of the old time stories. Miss Toby told them in Indian, so they sounded different when you tried to tell them in English. Not so good, somehow. But that was fun, those fairy tales. My best was Snow White, and Bertha's too. We like to think about all those funny little men.